and hard power. An unequal conflict. How will this end? The March of the Saffron Robes. Tonight, 9.30 p.m. on Channel News Asia. This is the first time James is visiting the Burmese Buddhist temple in Singapore since he arrived some one and a half months ago. It wasn't till now that he felt he needed this time of silent supplication. This 23-year-old Myanmar national, who wants only to be known as James, is praying for those at the forefront of anti-government protests. For someone who has been trying to leave the country for the last two years, James now wishes he was back home with the Saffron Warriors. I will have walked among with the monks and tried to protect them, you know, and support them all the way. It was a somewhat incongruous show of public defiance as tens of thousands from the Buddhist clergy pounded the streets in protest against the military rule. An act that was seen to challenge, embarrass and humiliate the junta who have held the country in its iron grip since 1962. The, the footage trickled out slowly from the isolated nation. And the world watched as the monks' involvement breathed new life into a faltering campaign, which began last month as a response to a sudden fuel price hike. And Myanmar's junta had to face up to the monks' challenge. As a Buddhist country, we we do respect to the monks as as like a like you know very very respect to them. So if something happened to the monks, if they're going to you know do something on the monks as a government. We will not see like that. We're going to you know we are always behind the monks and you know we're going to protect the monks. Since the beginning of time. Monks have occupied a revered place in this profoundly devout society. <laughs> Myanmar, which lies at the crossroads of China and India, is commonly known as the Land of Gold as a result of the elegant tapering spires of its Buddhist pagodas crowning every hill. Everywhere, there are signs of the religion of the people. The Myanmar people are almost entirely Buddhists. There is a monastery in every village, and monks act as the spiritual leaders of that community. At last count, there are close to 500,000 professional monks in this country of about 50 million. Burmese monks have not only been spiritual leaders, but they also have a history of political activism. They have always stood up against unpopular authorities, from their British colonial masters in the 1930s to the last pro-democracy campaign in 1988, which left thousands killed. Many families in, in Myanmar have sons who are in the monkhood. And so 
these connections are still strong, these connections are, are, are still binding. And so I could see that, yes, they have a very close relationship to society, close relationship to personal relationships with family members and so forth. And so I can easily see why um, monks would see themselves as caretakers of society. <laughs> On the 10th day of the protests, the military struck back, firing tear gas and bullets. The latest information at press time, nine people were killed, eight protesters and one journalist. This information varies from source to source. What started as a peaceful demonstration had become a battle between soft power and hard. While the monks were considered religious beings, soldiers are conditioned to believe they are an elite class entitled to special respect. And anyone who opposes them is an enemy that will return the country to chaos and civil war. It explains why the troops would open fire at unarmed monks and civilians without restraint. Because military uh, it, sh it should be be the who protect to the own people, not for beating people, not for killing people. For own protect the own country. That should be the military. It's now they are doing, you know, killing to the own people, it's not very right. Ironically, twenty six year old Lin Lei is the daughter of a retired military officer. She has chosen to remain anonymous for fear of reprisals. Because the rest of her family is still living in Myanmar, under the military regime. Ever since the start of the unrest, she has been trying to reach her family. The phone lines have been erratic. <laughs> It was known as the eight eight eighty eight. On 8th August 1988, hundreds of thousands of Myanmar nationals, from students to revered monks, took part in protests across the country. The impetus? The economic misery in Yangon. Their war cry? Democracy. That was the last time the ruling junta had to confront the heady energy of a mass demonstration. They fought back, and sources say more than 3,000 were killed. For Wuna and Naim, today's mounting protests against the junta is a chilling reminder of what happened that fateful August 1988. As final year students in a Burmese university, they were part of that momentous event. Burmese people, maybe they may be poor, you know, they may not understand or read, uh, you know, books about, uh, you know, democracy and things like that, but they know what the basic human needs, you know. They want their voice to be heard. They may not be very sophisticated, but they understand uh, what are the, uh, the fundamentals of, of, of uh, democratic society. We don't achieve uh, politically nothing, but uh, we have changed our mindset. And uh, that 88 
uh, give birth a generation who is continue to fight for democracy. So the people today who are doing the demonstration, most of them are born by the 1988 demonstration. Twenty years on, the war cry remains the same. Democracy.